going to Boston right now, hands down, funniest people on the planet are from Boston. It pains me to say that. I'm from New York City, born and raised, all right? I want to tell you New York is the best at everything, because we pretty much are, except for funny. It doesn't matter what genre of comedy you like, okay? You will find someone from Boston at the top of it. Patrice O'Neill, my favorite comic ever. You got Louie, Bill Burr, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, Amy Poehler. There's something about this fucking city that just oozes funny. And I'm gonna figure it out. That's why we're going. If I'm gonna be in town, I gotta meet up with my boy, Will Noonan. Most comics as good as Will usually move to New York or LA. He hasn't. People ask me why I stay in Boston and why yeah. I don't move to New York. Yeah, yeah. I'm sort of secretly I have an awesome fucking life. Like I live two minutes from the beach. Yeah, yeah. I run around that every day. Yeah. Beautiful women everywhere. Yeah. I do comedy six nights. Beautiful a women everywhere. In I've Boston. trained myself to see beautiful women everywhere. <laughs> Why is it that people are so fucking funny here? If I look at my family as like a microcosm of a Boston family, dinner time for us reminded me a lot of sitting at a table with a bunch of comics now. It was one-upmanship. It was who can come up with the funniest topical joke about what's going on. Yeah. Just being funny was value. currency, had value in our family. Comedy comes from tension. Yeah. Tension release, that's comedy. So where is the tension yeah, I think when life is good? You know it's a big sports city when the girls love sports and know the game. Dude. They all have tattoos. I feel like, uh, I'm that's like your I, butterfly. I, I always say, I'm like, yeah. I get a girl naked. I'm like, are you sponsored by the Boston Bruins? <laughs> There's a thing now where like your relationship isn't serious until you get a selfie with your boyfriend at Fenway Park. That's your Cancun. That's like, yeah, that's. A... Well, I mean, I've known you for a few years now and I just wanted to maybe make it official. Let's make it official, buddy. Can I take you to Fenway? I would love that. All right, let's roll. I'm just straight up fan excited right now. We're here at Fenway Park, yep. the greatest ballpark in the history. I think that's of debatable. I, it's a definitely debatable. Thing. Not debatable. Uh, Some I would say, say it's solid. Boston is the best city in all the world. Some would say the greatest city. Some wouldn't. Most wouldn't. A city I would say most would say that no. sleeps a little bit, the right amount. <laughs> this is a beaut. Want to take a selfie? We never did that. Oh yeah, let's take our selfie. Oh, it's getting serious. It's official. <laughs> We're going together, guys. If you want to understand where Boston gets its charm, its humor, its personality, then you got to go to the place where Boston's ball busting was born, Southie. Southie is everything Ben and Casey Affleck want their movies to look and feel like. You like Casey or Ben? Casey, Ben sucks. I didn't say that on fucking TV, did I? I'm sitting down the other with my wife, my mother, my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't sign fucking autographs. For me. My wife, it's my like, mother and so my what girlfriend. did I do? I just got fucking drunk. So I want to smoke and talk to you at the same time. I'm with that. Yeah, huh? No smoking in the back. Let's here a little bit. Let's make I didn't know Jesus was a uh, Catholic. He was a 33-year-old unemployed carpenter living at home with his parents and his mother thought he was God. Doesn't that make him Irish? I didn't know Jesus was Irish, <laughs> right. <laughs> Not too fucking shabby, bucko. <laughs> now, I didn't come here to speak to Jerry, though I'm glad I did. I came to Southie because this community has been ravaged by the opioid crisis in America. And I wanted to speak to Eric and Jack. Two comedians who have come up through a staggeringly large Narcotics Anonymous comedy scene right here in Boston. So we should acknowledge everybody, but are you sober or no? No. Not at all. No. You are. I'm sober, yes. From alcohol, any weed going on? I'm an alcoholic and coke addict. And coke addict. Yeah. So what about marijuana? Do you still smoke marijuana? No, I never got into marijuana. It made me yeah. too sweaty. Made you too sweaty? Yeah, I never liked it. But you did coke? Coke made me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> you do shows at recovery centers, and also halfway houses. And drug rehab. And drug rehab. So you do like stand-up comedy shows. Yeah. You lost some family members to um, Yeah, like my oldest brother, um, countless friends. There's the opioid ep epidemic all across America, right? Mm -hmm. And what is it specific about what's going on here that people are drawn to it? 
And the parallel I like to make to comedy is a lot of time comedy comes from this misery, right? Comedy is filling a void. Just like these people that are, you know, shooting up or they're using oxy. Like, I think like heroin addicts are like, it's too embarrassing to just go to your parents and be like, I feel like shit and like, I don't know what to do about it. And same with the comedy, you know, like I feel like shit. I don't know what to do about it. I need to go beg like a group of strangers for attention. Like if you have that extreme insecurity, you're gonna find something for it. Sometimes it's food, sometimes it's drugs, sometimes it's comedy. I would say, you know, comedy is not necessarily the healthiest of replacements, you know. Right? No, I would, no. It might have been better off if I had started running, but <laughs> instead I was like, oh, I gotta go talk about my dick. I've never <laughs> met a comedian that goes, you should do this for a living. <laughs> to else, right? Like, boxers will have their son be a boxer, and they get punched in the face, they're slurring their speech, and they're training their kid to be a boxer. No comedian is like, no, I need a legacy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, if my, if my son ever tried comedy, I would, I'd cry. Punch him right yeah. in the face. What are you doing? Failed. Yeah. Absolutely failed. You know, they say tragedy plus time equals comedy. And I think we waited long enough. Let's go make some people laugh. I dated a girl who had a Red Sox B tattoo, millimeters away from everything. Right next to the bullpen. Red Sox B. <laughs> and I love the Red Sox. I'm a guy, I'm from Boston. And sometimes. I like to not think about the Red Sox. <laughs> One of those times is when I'm looking at a naked woman, you know? I just like to put the Red Sox away for a little while. Focus on this cool thing I rarely get to see. <laughs> Live. It was a different time, ladies. It was a different time. You know, there weren't women's marches back then. No, no, society got good. You want to be equal, I get it. You know, it's... I'm just saying, when we were hunting buffalo, you guys were like, we'll just pick the berries. You know, the second they put air conditioning in office buildings, you're like, we want equality. It's like, fucking pretty good timing if you ask me, ladies. Some good fucking timing. I gotta go, have a good night. And now, here's an obligatory food montage brought to you by Thrillist. I present to you the Boston Cream Pie. Welcome to the Parker House. Me. I appreciate it. So Boston Cream Pie is actually the official state dessert of Massachusetts. Really? Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh my lord. Wow. Hold on, wait, wait. You thought I was just gonna have dessert? Come on, baby, I'm in Boston. It's time for some clams, some lobster, and some chowder. I like the bib. The bib is the admission that like there's no way to eat this with class. Mm, wow. So that one's sneaky good. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, to the Yankees. Welcome to Boston. All right. <laughs> The most prestigious comedy venue in Boston is the Wilbur Theater. This is where all the top comics in the world perform when they're in town. But it isn't where the local comics make their bones. They learn their craft at places like Nick's Comedy Club. It's the oldest comedy club in Boston. Matter of fact, it's been around so long that their bouncer Sammy has managed to get shot 10 times. Please give it up for Andrew Schultz. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys, thanks for clapping all the way. Uh, <laughs> appreciate the love already. All right. I had my first Boston cream pie. I Googled best uh, cream pie. That gets some interesting results. Uh, yeah, you got to be specific with that Google search. Do not Google that in public, okay? Best cream pie. A lot of things popping up on the screen. None of them cake, all right? <laughs> Will said that there's a show going on tonight that perfectly represents the underground scene they have here in the city. It's a show called Hecklefest, where heckling is not only encouraged, but it's the goal. Oh, and by the way, the show is in someone's house. There's nothing like this in New York, right? You don't even have grass like this in New York. No, we don't have yards. <laughs> Put your hands together for a next 
next comic, the one and only Will Noonan! Yeah. I found a lost kid at Castle Island, John Paul. Oh, you know, uh, honey taste. Yeah, John Paul. <laughs> the one on a woman. <laughs> Both are invisible to the industry. <laughs> what is Boston? It's blue collar. It's brash. It's ball busting. It's failure. It's tragedy. It's misery. You put all those together and add a fucking ridiculous accent, and that's the perfect recipe for fun. Hey man, for real, thank you guys so much for having me here. I'm in it. Like, 100%, this is the best show that I've been to out here, and it's fucking...